Hey there, Rick Sage, recording at the Rimrock Studios in Bishop, California. Welcome to Season 2 of the Outdoor Biz Podcast, where I speak with retailers, brand managers, athletes, executives, and others in the outdoor biz and share their stories, tips, advice, productivity tricks, and ideas you can use to take your career or business to the next level. Today's podcast is brought to you by WordPress. I've used WordPress to build a number of websites, including Stillwaters Consulting and the Outdoor Biz Podcast. There are a number of themes and plugins available, both free and for purchase, enabling you to easily create the custom look and feel you want. If you're starting an online business, publishing a blog, and looking to take your online presence to the next level, visit theoutdoorbizpodcast.com slash WordPress and get going today. With simple installation tools and thousands of themes to choose from, you'll be up and running in no time. Go to theoutdoorbizpodcast.com slash WordPress and get your site launched today. I'm excited to be speaking with Dan Funk from Eagle Creek on the show today. Dan has been the marketing coordinator and managing the Eagle Creek brand ambassadors, and he's recently taken on a retail merchandising position. Dan and I talk about his lifelong experience in the outdoors, what it's like to manage brand ambassadors, and he also tells us about his cool VW bus. Follow him on Instagram at Funky Bus to see it. Hey, Dan, welcome to the show. Good to have you on. How's it going today? It's going great. Thanks, Rick. Appreciate you having me. Yeah, good to chat with you. So um, how long have you been with Eagle Creek now? It has been almost two years. Oh, wow. Good for you. Yeah. Yeah, cool. And how did you get into the outdoors or adventure travel? What was your connection to this world? Uh, well, I grew up in a family that really loved the outdoors. My uh-huh. dad was in the Navy, so we moved a ton growing up. And we basically explored everywhere that we lived, from Florida, California, Hawaii, to Washington, D.C. Wow, very cool. So you yeah. got to see some good stuff. Yeah, yeah. And my parents were awesome. They were they would take us out exploring these different cities, national parks, really, you name it. Before I could even walk, there's photos of me in Yosemite <laughs> Valley. Wow, nice. And so did you guys hike and backpack and stuff or just went to two national parks and um, camp yeah and- a lot of camping mm. camping and hiking mostly oh. um car car camping since we were a family of four kids so definitely a little bit of a mess <laughs> right um, on. more fun yeah. i bet though yeah and mm. then as a kid i joined the boy scouts and really just continued that outdoor obsession through my childhood and into my adult life ah so what was your first outdoor job or did you have a traditional retail job or how did you come up through the ranks <laughs> No, actually never retail. So during college, I interned with um, these two guys, Chris Clark and Derek Capala at Simmer Surfboards. It was yep. like a custom surfboard company that eventually morphed into Shaper Studios, which okay. is yeah. it's like a, a workshop where you can rent space and tools to make your own surfboard. Right. Um, so I kind of started out in the surf industry. And then that same year, I started working at La Jolla Kayak in San Diego as a tour guide. Um, I'd take people in the San Diego area out on kayak and snorkel tours of the La Jolla Cove. Wow, that'd Uh, be fun. Yeah, it was a really fun outdoor job. So we'd I paddle out, we'd check out the caves. There's these cool caves that are carved into the cliffs through the wind. Yep, yep. Um, And then we'd check out all the wildlife. There'd be tons of sea lions and dolphins. And in the summer, there'd be just hundreds of leopard sharks that come to the cove to breed. Right, right. Um, So on the really clear visibility days, I'd anchor in the kayaks and we'd do a little snorkel tour. Wow, very cool. So people yeah, must have yeah. loved that, huh? Yeah, yeah. It was, it was a blast of a job. I still miss it. Yeah, Get those of us that have guiding experience, we always, <laughs> right? it's like, man, I'd love to go back to do that. But <laughs> just catches up with you. Can't make enough money mm-hmm. or other things happen. So you've been with Eagle Creek a couple of years now and you were um, the marketing coordinator and ambassador manager previous to your new role, which we'll talk about. But tell us what it was like to be the marketing coordinator and manage all those ambassadors. That must have been pretty yeah. challenging. Yeah. The marketing coordinator role, it's a really fun position because you have um, you really have your foot in the door of so many different aspects of a marketing department. Mm hmm. Um, before I was at Eagle Creek, I had the same, a really similar role with Boardworks Surf. It was like a surfboard and paddleboard manufacturer. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but before that, I really, I really just had my eyes set on the surf industry when I graduated college. So I took a position with Boardworks as an assistant bookkeeper um, <laughs> oh, wow. and just managing the accounts, doing the collections and, you know, accounts receivable. And then worked my way over to customer service and eventually the marketing role. Right on. Did you have a county background? Um, no, not really just a business degree, but an emphasis in marketing. Uh-huh. So still a marketing guy that, you know, I had to take accounting classes, but sure. that was the yeah. extent of my background there. Interesting. And so then you got into Eagle Creek, so you get to do a lot of fun stuff. What was managing the ambassadors like? I mean, how, how, do you guys have a lot of ambassadors? 
handful? Not too much, just a, just a handful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but really the ambassador management is a world in itself. Um, it's kind of crazy to think as that just, that was just one part of my role as the marketing coordinator. Um, because there's, you know, you can go so deep and far with the ambassador management really as you want. Right. right. Um, but I definitely learned a cool, you know, a few key pieces there. I think the big win with an ambassador's is having a really strong relationship and an authentic relationship with the ambassador mm-hmm. and the brand itself. Right. Um, I've noticed a lot, you know, the, the ambassador needs to be a true fan of the brand. Mm-hmm. Otherwise people will notice if it's, if the endorsement's really not authentic. Yeah. Um, so I found it's best to work with ambassadors who already know us, who like the brand. They're already speaking for the brand. Um, and it's like a really authentic, easy relationship to go from there. And do they, but, sorry, go ahead. Oh, then I was going to say, if, and then on the other side, if you're not, you know, a more established brand like Eagle Creek, if you're a startup or you don't really have a big fan base, mm-hmm. then I found the success was really finding the ambassadors that first, you know, fit the brand, whether it's, you know, the imagery, the aesthetics and the values of the brand, right. but then really bring them into the brand as if they're one of the family. Mm-hmm. Like the more you include these ambassadors in the brand, um, rather than just telling them, Hey, can you help promote this campaign? Be like, Hey, this is a campaign that we established. This is how we landed on the campaign. This is why we're doing this. This is how to talk about it a little and bring like the more in depth and behind the scenes you can bring the ambassadors in. I found that to be a, a, a lot more successful. Right. That makes total sense. And so do you, when you create the campaigns, do you tell them where you want them to go or do they just kind of say, Hey, this is where I'm going this year. What do you got? How's that? How's that role work? Oh, totally let them go where they're going and mm-hmm. try to piggyback on some of what their plans are and how can, how can we, um, you know, create content together on some of these trips that they're already planning on. Gotcha. Uh, right. But really giving them a lot of flexibility and freedom to mm-hmm. do what they love to do and keep it going. Cause that's, you know, that's why, that's why they're ambassadors. Yeah. It's more authentic that way too, I guess. Right? Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And did you ever get to go on any of those trips? Um, yeah. I, I've gotten to go on a few with nice. Eagle Creek. Yeah. Um, I did a trip. The first one was to Colorado. We went to Vail and stayed with um, Ben Horton. He's one of our ambassadors and this Nat Geo guy. We stayed at his mom's house in Vail nice. as our home base. And then we kind of just jumped around the mountains from there for some shoots. And cool. then um, this past fall, I did a trip say, with the same guy, Ben, and we went down to Baja. Nice. And did a little like, kind of surf climbing trip in Mexico. Very fun. Yeah, good. Yeah. And you recently took on a new role there. Tell us about that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm super excited about this next opportunity. I just stepped out of that marketing coordinator role and into the retail merchandising position. Excellent. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. That's a big job. I know when I was at Eagle Creek, we had a bunch of merchandisers that would travel around and set up stores and make sure their product was all looking good and product stuffed out and signage all appropriate. You guys still doing those kind of things? Oh yeah, oh yeah, that and more, all sorts of good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Do you do you guys go to events now uh, around the with retailers, sponsor um, events? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah, yeah. We're doing a few different types of things, so it's actually pretty new for Eagle Creek this year. Um, we have a grassroots mobile marketing tour. We have this. Um, you cool got the camper. new teardrop, right? Yeah, yeah that teardrop trailer <laughs> that you saw at Outdoor Retailer. Very cool. Yeah. So we're taking that all over the country this year um, and weaving some retail stops into that as well. It's not all about retail though. It's a lot about kind of ambassadors, content creation, and storytelling. Mm-hmm. Very fun. So you get to go on the road with that trailer? A little bit. Yeah. I'm yeah. gonna yeah, I'm gonna go meet those ambassadors next week in Austin, Texas for it. Yep. Fun. So that's the that's the first stop. Yeah, awesome. And what other kind of events are you guys gonna do? Can you not talk about it or do you, do you guys go to South by Southwest and Coachella and all that? Um, so that's where we're, that's where I'm heading next week. Okay. Yeah. And Austin is for South by Southwest. Cool. Uh, but this is our first year of kind of this grassroots event. So it'll be a mix between some festivals and also just like some outdoor parks. Um, we're really, the whole idea is to raise our brand awareness, especially with that younger demographic, like that 18 to 30 year old. So just trying to show up where those kids are already showing up. Yeah. Right. Perfect. Yeah. So what are you most excited about uh, the, this new role? Um, probably about bringing our brand and impact message to retail. Mm-hmm. Um, in the, in the past, I know Eagle Creek's definitely been a little more product centric, you yeah. know, and really telling the product story at retail, the features and the benefits. Um, but new for this year, we have a, a full on brand campaign. Mm-hmm. Um, the story is find your unknown. It's all about, you know, travel changes you, get it out of your comfort zone. 
Um, and I kind of finding that next destination of you're not too sure what's going to happen. Right. Um, and that's where we realize that travel really trans- transforms people. Um, so there's a lot of energy around this new brand campaign. So I'm really excited and anxious to bring that energy to retail. Awesome. So what do you think are going to be some of your biggest challenges in doing that? There's definitely a lot of challenges in this role. Um, Eel Creek is definitely a big player in the outdoor space, mm-hmm. but we're also um, in a lot of luggage specialty stores around right, the U.S. Right. And some of our travel accessories have gotten us into some larger department stores and chains. So a challenge, I think, is going to be telling our consistent brand story and having this global aesthetic, mm-hmm. despite all these vast differences in the retail spaces that we're working with. Right. You guys do cross channels probably more than any other brand in the outdoor space, I'll bet. Possibly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's been that way for so, a long time. Right. So we want to have some consistency, but we also know we do need to kind of speak to the customer that's at each of those stores to exactly. really maximize the benefit. Yeah. What do you think is going to be the most fun? Obviously, South by Southwest is going to be a blast. <laughs> yeah, totally. I think just get, uh, getting on the front lines, visiting all the retail stores, um, forming relationships with all those accounts and managers. And then just kind of creating custom solutions for each of their needs. Mm-hmm. And do you have any sub initiatives within that big major campaign, like something different for travel stores versus outdoor stores? Is it are you just going to try to squeeze it in as best you can? Um, we're definitely going to spread it out. But I think um, one of my first initiatives is specifically the outdoor specialty stores. Okay. So, mm-hmm. right, not the REIs, not the chains, but those mom and pop outdoor shops across the country. Right. Um, A lot of those stores, you know, they've been awesome accounts and relationships for Eagle Creek over the decades. Yeah. But the image and the feel of Eagle Creek in those stores is a bit outdated. Mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. So bringing, you know, a fresh new look of the brand to those shops. That's going to be one of my first initiatives here. That'll be fun. (laughs) Yeah. So let's shift gears a little bit. What was your most recent adventure? Um, I just got back last night from a quick Mexico trip with my wife and our little four month old. Wow. Very fun. Where'd you yeah. go We're down in Mexico? Um, just Rosarito, a little south of Rosarito. Yep. So just a quick, um, I don't know, hour and a half drive south yep. of San Diego. Cool. Did you camp so out? Not, no, we stayed at a hotel. We didn't yeah. camp with the baby quite yeah. yet. <laughs> yeah. But had a hotel and got some surfing, some waves, had plenty of margaritas and sun. So <laughs> great little weekend escape yep. with the fam. And what's awesome about Baja, it's a quick drive down there. It's um, so, so close. The, yeah. tra- the traveling is easy. It's so close. But yeah. coming home after a long weekend down there, it feels like you are far from home. <laughs> that's right. You know? Yeah, right. feels like it's a different world. Yeah, totally. Yeah, that's cool. How about your next adventure? Where are you going next? Um, well, next weekend to Austin for South by Southwest. Gotcha. That's definitely, a, you know, that a work trip, right. as you would call it. Yeah. Um, so I guess my next big outdoor adventure is in April. I'll, I'm going to try to take a week off with the fam to go up to Mammoth and Yosemite. Oh, awesome. Well, give a holler when you so, but, cruise through Bishop. <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. I'll meet you at the uh, the local pub. We have a new brewery in town. Well, it's not new anymore. It's been here a couple of years, but sells great burgers and beers. Cool. I'll see you there, Rick. Yeah, cool. Sounds good. <laughs> and uh, what about some nonprofit work you guys do? Who, who are you working with on the nonprofit side these days? Um, you know what? This is actually pretty cool. Eagle Creek has an awesome program for its employees. Um, it's this volunteer program is what we call it. Uh-huh. But basically, it allows us additional paid days off to go volunteer somewhere. Oh, nice. Um, and we're a travel brand, so the Eagle Creek's also encouraging us to go travel mm, to volunteer. So they'll great. even reimb- they'll even reimburse us travel costs That's to great. go volunteer. Yeah. Um, so this last year, I had a trip planned with the PCTA, mm-hmm. the Pacific Crest Trail Association, to volunteer on the trail out in the backcountry. Great. Um, I had to pull out of that trip because our little girl was born right around oh, that same time. Uh-huh. So I'm planning the same, a similar type of trip for this year. Um, I'll go do, I'm looking at the Oregon or the Washington, mm-hmm. um, region of the trail just cause that's a little further from, for me. Yeah. And, right, you know, right. something different. Yeah. I've never um, been on I'll that hope, part of the trail. Yeah. 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 I mean, either. So hopefully, um, I'll find a solid five or seven day project to sign up for. Oh, I'm sure you can find um, that. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll go out into the back country, you know, the further out, the better set up camp at some lake or something, and then work on just trail restoration and maintenance from there for a week. Right. That's awesome. Well, you probably are going to wind up having a better time because last year it was rugged out there. These folks were oh, yeah. coming through Bishop. Was, Man, 
They looked haggard. It was wet. It was yeah. wet. It was big snow, big runoff. Yeah, it was challenging. As I'm sure you heard from Laura, who was on the podcast last week. Yeah. Yep. Yep. She had some tough times. Friend of mine. So, what other outdoor activities do you participate in? Surfing, hiking. Yeah, you you nailed it. Actually, living in Encinitas, the ocean's <laughs> the backyard. So, I'm definitely a surfer. That's my that's my go to um, outdoor space is the ocean. Mm-hmm. But when there's not waves, um, we're like a day like today, and the ocean's flat. Um, I'm a love to go scuba diving too. Oh, nice, excellent, very yeah. cool. Yeah. And then if I have some more time, just to kind of get out of my comfort zone away from the ocean, I'd head up to the mountains. Whether that's just you know east part of san diego or up into the sierra whatever it is but rock climbing backpacking snowboarding any of the mountain sports are really like, kind of gets me more out of my elements so that feels more adventurous to me than just a day surfing or diving right well you do it all you're a water guy though huh yep yeah cool and uh, do you have any suggestions or advice for folks wanting to get into the outdoor biz or grow their career like you've kind of worked up through the ranks any advice for folks who want to do that Totally. Yeah. I'd say to first kind of hone in on what you're passionate about in the outdoors, whether that's surfing or hiking or camping, you know, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. And then also um, try to hone in on something that you're passionate about on the business side of things. So Mm -hmm. um, product design or marketing or sales. Um, So if you can combine those two passions, then I'd say you're golden. Um, And then if you're just trying to get into it, you know, if you're, you find this passion for marketing or for product design, whatever it is, try to build some experience around that part of the business. And if you don't have the experience, then maybe look for some volunteering opportunities mm-hmm. to help to help build that experience. Yeah, that's great advice. Yeah, there's ways to plug in before you get, actually get the job to make connections and volunteer. Exactly, yeah. Right. yeah. Good. And do you have any daily routines you use to keep your sanity? Do you meditate, exercise, obviously play with your little girl? That keeps you busy. Oh yeah, it and can. If, she, if, she, if she's happy, then it can be meditation. But if she's not, I don't. Know, I don't know if that's what you call it. Um, but I'd say surfing for me is definitely my uh, my go to daily routine to help keep my sanity. Nice. Um, Eagle Creek is actually pretty awesome about encouraging us to take our lunch breaks oh. and go outside, get out of the office. You know, stretch your legs. Um, so I'll actually jump straight in my VW bus and go straight to the ocean. I'll chow down a sandwich on the way there and surf for a quick 20 or 30 minutes and then head back to the office. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are close enough. You could pull that off. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. And do you have any favorite books or books that you give as gifts? Uh, yeah. On the road actually by oh, Jack Kerouac great book. Yeah. Is, uh, is one of my favorites. And it's funny you asked if that's a good book to give because I gave that to all my groomsmen when yeah, I got nice. married. It's very cool. You know, I, I, you're supposed to have like a little gift or whatever for right. the groomsmen. And at the time there were a bunch of younger guys who were single and, you know, looking for that, whatever's next, basically yeah. it's someone, there's someone who's like kind of roaming. It's not sure what that next step is or where they should go or what they should do. I'm like, read this book and then, <laughs> yeah. and then go wherever you want. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I read that book years ago too. When I was, I wasn't a, a groomsman, but uh, actually I was the best man four times in one summer, which created oh a challenge, gosh. but yeah, but yeah, no, that's a great book. That's a classic. Yeah. Yeah. Any others? Um, the Dharma bombs, another no, rock book yeah. I really love, another but as one. far as gifts, definitely on the road. Yeah, that's um, awesome. We'll, we'll link to the both of those in the show notes. That's great. Mm-hmm. And how, what is your favorite outdoor gear purchase under a hundred dollars? This is is this my time for an Eagle Creek plug? Yeah, Rich? Hey, yeah, I go for so. it, I man. Think so. I Eagle think so. Creek packing cubes, baby. There you Lightweight go. Lightweight packing cubes all day long. Yeah. No, just kidding. I'd say I don't know if um. I love really those counts. things. I still use oh, those yeah. things. I was there when we launched them, and they they're they're awesome. They're perfect. Yeah, no, they are pretty game changing to yeah. save space when you're packing. Yep. Um, but I mean, outside Eagle Creek, I'd have to, this is kind of weird. I have to say my ukulele though. Okay. It might, cool. it might not be technically an outdoor gear purchase and it might not have been under a hundred dollars, probably right <laughs> around there. Um, that's cool. I, mean, I like this it. Past, this past year I went backpacking with an instrument for my first time and that was just a game changer. Wow. So, I mean, awesome. shoots, even if you just bought a harmonica or a, travel guitar or a drum i don't really care but yeah taking music in the outdoors there's a, i think there's always a time and space for it if you're in a yep. quiet campground and you got a lot of neighbors maybe leave the drum at home but if you're out there by yourself you know just be respectful to the ones around you but yeah if you're out there camping out lake by yourself and jam out that's great so where'd you learn how to play the ukulele 
I just taught myself actually. Okay. Um, uh-huh. The internet for sure helps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I've been playing guitar and bass guitar for a long time. So, the, oh, so you have some chops. Kind of okay, a, yeah, yeah, kind of yeah. an easy transition. Got you. Yeah. Easier to travel with the ukulele. It's smaller, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's why yeah. I got it. Cool. Uh, anything else you want to ask of our audience or say to our audience before we wrap up? Um, yeah, I, I'd say I think my biggest advice probably for this audience and this group would be to simply just don't forget to boogie. Um, <laughs> like you know, it. it's, yeah. it's kind of simple, <laughs> but we're all in the, in this industry because our passions, whether it's passion for the outdoors or climbing, skiing, whatever it is that keeps you motivated. Yep. And if it wasn't for these passions, then we probably wouldn't be working in this industry. Exactly. So, you know, don't forget to lose sight of why you're here. It can be really easy to get wrapped up in work and mm-hmm. forget to keep on living. So make sure your work and life are balanced and don't forget to boogie. I love it. Awesome. That might be a tagline or something. I like that. There we'll do go. a t-shirt maybe. And uh, <laughs> if people want to follow up with you, how can they best reach you? LinkedIn, Twitter, and yeah, all the usual suspects. I'm on LinkedIn, Dan Funk. Um, I'm not on Twitter. I'm on Instagram as Funky Life. So you can find me there. Or if I've been, this is funny. I've been trying to rent my VW bus out for shoots, oh, for photo yeah. shoots for different brands since uh-huh. I've done a few um, professional photo shoots with it. So you can find that on Funky Bus and rent out rent out the VW. Is that on just funkybus.com or on Instagram? Oh, on Instagram, yeah. Gotcha. Okay, well, we'll link to both of those. Cool. I'll check that out, too. I'll make sure I follow you. That's awesome. That's a great idea. Yeah, it was, I've had it for five years, and <laughs> I used it for a shoot with Boardworks a while ago, and then I used it with one of our Eagle Creek photographers last year. He's like, man, you should be running this out as a prop <laughs> exactly. for, some photo, for some photo shoots. This right thing's on. beauty. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, well, great. Well, Dan, it's been great chatting with you. I look forward to seeing you. I'm going to actually be down there next week. I don't know if I'll... Might have time to swing by the office on Friday. I'll give you guys a heads up and okay, cool. Maybe we yeah, can we grab next. McGuire and a bunch of us can go grab lunch. Sounds good. Yeah, cool. Well, thanks. I appreciate it, Dan. All right, great. Yeah, thank you, Rick, for reaching out. I'm glad to get to sit down with you and chat. Yep, good to talk to you. I'll talk to you soon. All right, thanks. All right, bye. All right. All right, I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Dan Funk. You can catch up with him on LinkedIn and be sure to follow his two Instagram feeds at Funky Life and Funky Bus. And as Dan says, don't forget the boogie. You'll find links to everything we discussed in the show notes at theoutdoorbizpodcast.com slash episodes slash 082. Be sure to hit your favorite podcast app and subscribe today. Thanks for listening. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. I've used Audible for many years now. I'm on the road a lot, and Audible allows me to enjoy the great books I discover or are recommended by friends. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash theoutdoorbizpodcast. There are over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Start your 30-day free trial with Audible today. If you want more of the Outdoor Biz Podcast, you can subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcast. Be sure and go to theoutdoorbizpodcast.com where you find all the episodes, show notes, and much, much more. Thanks for listening, and until next time, be sure and make time to get outside.